and it is much needed during the summer and also remember that we are giving away two lookbook junk journals or junk journal lookbooks. Um, we haven't decided which name to use, but so far we've been leaning towards junk journal lookbooks. And I actually have um, given a tour of one of the books that we're giving away. A tour of the other one is coming up soon within, I would say, the next week, maybe even less than, actually, you know what, I think I might do it this week. Um, all you have to do to enter, it's super simple. Just subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking subscribe, 100% free, never ever cost you anything, and leave a comment on one of our videos that you watch so you could watch it, leave a comment, it could be any comment, it could be a word, it could be an emoji, it could be a sentence, a paragraph, it's up to you. And also for every other video that you watch on this particular channel, as long as you're a subscriber, you will receive an extra entry into the drawing. Now, one of the things we were talking about is giving away some of what you see here, some costume jewelry, um, buttons. I have some amazing buttons that definitely some of them would love to have a new home, um, et cetera. So we've been talking about that and we'll see how that goes. That might be something that we say for the holiday season but these giveaways will continue. Why? Because I have, you know, more than enough stuff and I would like to share other people shared with me. So I just want to pay it forward. And also when you're creating these junk journal lookbooks, it's really cool to use items like actual authentic jewelry and ephemera and buttons, like things that you didn't have to create by hand. And these things actually have a history and they're true antiques or they're true vintage items. And just to give you a preview of this particular junk journal lookbook. Um, yeah, this is what this one looks like. So this one is mine. So obvious it has my name going down the side. Um, so this one is mine personally. I actually use it. I write in it. I draw in it. I add pictures like actual photographs and other ephemeral items old letters that i've received over the years etc to this so this is just an example of one of the books that i created and i have others i can't use all of these so i figured why not give some away and I, someone actually asked me why don't i sell um the books Maybe that's something that would happen in the future, but right now I am in the most giving of moods, so I just, you know, want to give them away versus selling them. And if you have a request, um, simply leave a comment down below um, and be a subscriber. So the good thing, you kill two birds with one stone, and I will get back to you about, you know, if you want me to create one for you as well as that's an entry so that you can win one for free. So what are you here for today? You are here to see what I have in this lovely pile of beauties that um, were gifted to me and I greatly, greatly appreciate all of the gifts and things that you guys mail me. I love getting mail, you, you know, whether it be a greeting card or something like this and everything else you can imagine in between so thank you so much you guys are so amazing and I try to put every item to good use and if I can't use it in one of my projects or if I'm not going to use it in a future project that I haven't thought of yet then like I said I like to pay it forward as well so in here there's a variety of things so what I will do is kind of show you what's in here. I will use this card as my white background so you can see better. And, you know, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. So I'm going to start with something that had really caught my eye 
when I dumped all this stuff out. So one of the things I saw was this beautiful swan buckle. Now I have a plan for this. It will require maybe, maybe, I'm not sure yet, but me removing, not necessarily like this part. If I can remove this part easily, hopefully I can. This is pretty solid. It's like I can't even really, I can't bend it with my hand or my fingers. So yeah, I definitely have plans for this that you guys will definitely be looking at and seeing in the future. What else do we have in here? Ooh, this peacock. That was another that caught my eye, I think, and I could be wrong, but I am like 80% sure that in my brooch collection, I already have something similar to this. Um, the thing is, or the, did this come from our shop? And it was, ended up getting gifted back to me, but this is familiar to me. And the, the issue with this is it is missing some enamel here and a tiny bit there, but believe it or not, Martha Stewart and others sell um, enamel paint where you can easily fix that on your own. The only thing is you'll want to make sure the shade is matching. You can see that every other peacock feather has like a different shade of blue. There's only two different shades, but it's like this darker, this one is more like aqua, and then you have this beautiful midnight blue, like you can see, so I would have to make sure I could match it as closely as possible. Um, the thing I did not look at on the buckle, oh, this one does have a signature, and let me get my loop. So in the circle, it says Portugal, so the country, so. That's not a maker, but at least we know what country it came from. And the buckle, I just picked that up right now and looking at it, I don't see any signature on the buckle. And something else that caught my eye was this amazingly elegant, um, and I could tell that this is vintage. The other two are vintage as well. Like every, I think almost everything in here is vintage, but we'll look at that and some of it is antique, but this beautiful bird in flight. I love a good bird in flight. This is great if you're wearing like a solid color dress. If you have the right hat, you could use this as your hat pin or just an embellishment on said hat. And this one also has a signature on it and it says Armandi or it says M-O-N-D D-L-E maybe. So I will definitely be looking up that maker, but that is a maker I think I recognize from some of my other jewelry pieces and bits. But look, the bird even has like its original eyes, which are darker rhinestones. So really amazingly, gorgeously pretty in the name of queen but this is a really cool brooch with it's considered to be a dangler because it has all these pieces that dangle off of it and it makes like the sweetest little noise like you want to keep on shaking it which could get on someone's nerves but who cares now this brooch isn't as old as the others um, I can tell by the shape of the rhinestones which are glued in and glutenite rhinestones were used in older pieces of jewelry as well as in newer pieces of jewelry. Um, this does not have a signature or maker's mark that I can see. And I am going to go through these a little bit quicker, so I might miss maker's marks on some things. Let's see. Ooh, this little Art Nouveau piece. This is just absolutely beautiful. Like, the only place where they really, I mean, you could kind of see the detail in the face. So they actually put decent work into the detail. The face could be, it's a little crude, but the rest of it is absolutely like beautiful. The long lines, you have the little muscular area in her calf down here, and then the graduating up to her thigh. 
So usually that's, you know, detail that's pretty much missing. Even her ankle bone is showing with the curve of her foot. So when you're looking for like quality costume jewelry parts, that's what you're looking for are, you know, details like that. And as well as you can see the shape in various like areas of her arm, her little elbow and shoulder. So this is a really sweet piece with, you know, her just standing out there in all of her glory. Now, I don't know what this went to. It does not have any indication whatsoever um, that it was attached to like anything like a pin back. So it was not a pin. It has no hole in it. So it's not a pendant. So my thought is that this was stuck on to something and was removed probably when the item was no longer usable and I'm looking I don't see any signature on this and yeah, I just love it just imagine this um, on a junk journal because one of the plans for this yeah that's one of the plans for this yep just gave it away I just did it and there, there's one, there's two, there might be more in here, I can't, but I just saw these immediately. These, um, pins, which I think are from that 1928 line that Macy's used to sell. That's what they remind me of, and they're deco in design. Um, I don't know if you guys remember that, but I'm, there's quite a bit, I don't know how much, like, you have to make sure it's authentic, 1928. Um, but they used to sell a line of 1928 jewelry. This is exactly what this reminds me of, that style that they sold. And it's common to see the backs looking like that. Which, look at how consistent those two are. And these are just beautiful pins. Amazing, like I said, for hats. Um, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily put one on a dress probably, but definitely going to use those on hats. And I'm just to let you guys know, quite a bit of what you see are items I'm keeping. There were other items in here that I put in my junk jewelry pile, and those will be used for different projects as well as, you know, things that will find a new home, hopefully with some of you. And this, I don't know what this is, so I need your help on this one. So this is definitely Lucite. It's that um, Butterscotch Lucite, I think. And then it has this inset rhinestone. So they would heat this plastic, which is what Bakelite is. And then they would use a glue as well, and they would push. They would inset this in, and that's how it remained for God, however many decades. But then it also has this like long skinny pin mechanism. But then I noticed that there's little striations where the point is. Can you see that? See the point? And this metal appears to be like brass. So it's not um, copper. It's not, you know, steel. Obviously it's not silver and it's not a coating so yeah and there's even yeah i was able to peel that off it's cool so this is what the pin looks like or the yeah the pin portion of it and the back has nothing on it it looks like this and this pin was set in when this plastic was hot it was heated and then pressed into this beautiful wedge, which has this gorgeous curve right here. I love that. So this, I, I don't think it's, I mean, I have hat pins. So I know it's not a hat pin. I know it's not a lapel pin. I know it's not a stick pin. I don't know what this is. And, you know, was there something else? I don't know it's a pin but what kind of pin and also just to let you know this is a business card that I'm holding this is how long the pin portion is so it's not that long it's a couple inches maybe a couple inches and a quarter at most so if you guys know what this is please let me know
but I love it. It's gorgeous, and I'm going to try to use it in something that I normally wear today. I actually wore two of my bug pens, and I had lots of compliments on those and my boots. And this lady's like, no one dresses like that anymore. She's like, everyone's running around naked and they think it's stylish and they think it's sexy. She's like, you're sexy. And I was like, um, thank you. <laughs> but that was, that was super fun. But anyway, here, but if you dress like the way that I dress is basically a combination of vintage and modern. I, I, I mix the two styles. So you will see me wear a hat from let's say the 1950s, 60s. Most of my hats are probably like 1950s and older. And with that, I will wear maybe a um, bag style purse, or sometimes I'll even wear one of those named purses and I, or a vintage purse. And I will wear, you know, a dress, a skirt. Usually that's what I wear. I do have pants. I don't wear them often, but I do have, um, you know, several pair of pants. Some of my pants are sort of like a straight leg and then at the bottom there might be a ruffle like there's always something extra it's always or they might be plaid or something there's always a little something extra and with any of those ensembles i'm then wearing a pair of doc martin boots so or some sort of funky oxfordy type shoe as long as it has enough heel to give me an inch or two extra in height I'm always looking for at least two more inches in height. Um, but yeah, that's, you know, so I do have, you know, a different type of style. But these beautiful scatter pins, they are made from a resin. So that means they're not the oldest, but they're not the youngest. And you know why? The pinning ne mechanism gives away the fact that these have age. Um, or the pinning mechanisms were recycled because both of them are different on the back of these pins but what i love adore and am going to cherish forever about these pins and i will definitely be wearing the scatter pins is the fact that they're the color like the color is absolutely stunning with these yellow and green centers so pretty what else can i show you that i'm over, oh, over the moon about some Asian influence. Um, these, this is like such an amazing piece. It's made with, this is actually glass. It's glass that's encasing metal and this red background, which could be paint. That could be like a, a reverse painted background. And what they would have done is they would have taken um, the glass, poured it, and then they would have pressed in this because the middle is definitely metal with the guy pulling the rickshaw. And then they would have painted the back so that you had this effect, which is absolutely stunning. And look at the setting for this. And it's you can see these prongs. There's like six of them on the left and right side, as well as the frame where my fingers are with I don't know if these um, letters or whatever mean anything or if they're clearly decorative well they're decorative in this case because they surround this complete oval and this actually has some weight to it because of the glass which I like um, oh we can see the back a little bit so if we look down in there we can see the red which looks like it's an enamel paint. Let me get my little tool here. Yeah, that's an enamel paint. So it's reverse enamel painted with the inset metal and glass. Absolutely amazing pin brooch. It's like the size of a brooch. I will definitely, of course, like I said, these are all things that I am keeping and cherishing and loving from the person that gave them to me who is an absolute stunner number one superstar in her own right um and a good friend a very good friend 
And here I have this amazing rooster. Even his little feet have detail of his roostery chicken toes. Um, his cone up here at the top, which is what you call this red thing, is called a cone. Once again, just like with the other pin, the enamel is missing a little bit, and I will be trying to fix that. And look at the feather detail, um, this beautiful like work where you can see through the body. You can see the white through there. That's really, really nice. And then you flip it over and it looks like it's made out of almost a copper alloy material. And actually I didn't, right up at the top of his cone, there's a signature. Let's see what that says. That says, that says I'm holding it upside, they printed it in upside down. It actually says silver, like S-I-L-V-E-R. Now, I don't know if silver is a name. I am strongly suggesting that this is definitely not a sil like, this is not sterling silver. Um, I, I think it could, this may be German because I think that they mark their thing silver and it was like this silver nickel alloy that they use to make like their jewelry and other things like that. So I will, once again, have to do some research on that. Oh, look at this. This is another mystery item that I need your help identifying. Now, I have zero clues as to what this is. It is not a ring that was opened and butterflied out on the left and right side. This butterflying, I call it butterflying, that you see here and on the other side, it was made like that initially. It has this gigantic amethyst in the center. It does have a, you can see right here, it has a flaw, a little flaw. Um, who cares? I think it gives a character. It's absolutely stunning, whatever this is. Um, the metal, I believe, is just an alloy type metal. And it just has all this beautiful work in the blackening that they did to show off the details. It's not, and that's the other thing I looked for. There's no breaks. It doesn't show like where it was broken off of anything. Um, the maker's name, let's see if we can see it in the camera, is, you can't see it in the camera, clearly. Let's see what it says. It says... It says, oh, it says Czechoslovakia. Dios mio, I can't speak. I can speak Spanish today. It says Czechoslovakia. So it says Czechoslovakia. I don't know why, obviously, other than that's where it was made. It has this, see the little, like, detail in the center? I mean, whoever made this, they paid attention to everything. Because if you look at it here, you can't even see that detail. So the back of this was just as important as the front of it, which is what I always say about junk journal lookbooks. Um, but yeah, I will just hold it up one more time. So if you guys know what this is, you know, please let me know in the comments down below. it's really pretty here is another really amazing piece and it has the koi fish in the center almost like a yin and yang effect in the design with some flora and fauna that they're swimming around in this beautiful black dark pool of just a black dark pool. It's like so gorgeous. Um, I don't know what this is made of. It's, I would say the weight is a medium weight for its, um, you know, size and girth. And this is not a small piece either. As you can see, it's against the background of this business card, which is now dirty from this dirty costume jewelry. It does need to be wiped down. And once again, use your soft toothbrushes 
um, just to clean things up. I still ha I haven't done that with this stuff. I wanted to show it to you guys first. So you can see how long it is. It's very tall and it has a decent wideness. It's about the third of the length of a business card. So it's not a little tiny baby, that's for sure. But once again, for its size, the weight is more of a medium weight. And you can see this gorgeous um, setting that it's in. They would have crimped that all the way around to hold this in. They may have used like a flux or a glue or something on the back of it as well. I have seen this particular like design for a pin back before. So I feel as if if we can identify this style of pin back, then we would know who made who the maker was of this pin. Um, but you can tell by the pin itself that this is something that was probably from the 1980s or newer. I think that this honestly is from the 1980s because um, that's when sort of the oriental jewelry style started to sort of make a comeback after like the 1928 jewelry craze. Why? Because everything old is new again. So if you guys right now are like, oh my god, I really hate, you know, these pants now or this shirt that I spent God only knows how much money on. Remember, if you don't need to get rid of it and you have the room and you're not a hoarder, you might want to keep it as long as you know you can fit into it, like if your sizes are consistent. And it, the same thing with costume jewelry and other things like that. If you are a lover of those things now, you will most likely be a lover of those things later. And you just want to keep them because, I, I mean, I have probably my seven or eight favorite clothing items that I've kept over the decades and I have revisited numerous times. But as someone who likes to wear a combination of vintage and modern, um, that's my vibe anyway. Uh, and here, look at this beautiful, gorgeous brooch and this very, like, sort of chunky oval style and also just the thickness of it. It's pretty thick and the enameling is really nice. And there's a whole paragraph of words. Okay, for costume jewelry, this would be considered a lot of words. It's definitely not a paragraph. <laughs> um, it says genuine or genuine cloisonne. So cloisonne is this method that was used. It was an Asian invention, as you know, so many things are and were where they would take wire and they would actually shape the wire like they did around the flowers, the leaves, and even this frame. And then they would pour the different individual colors in to those areas. That is what cloisonne is. It's the shaping of wire and filling in with color, in this case, enamel. And this is an older pin you could tell by once again you could date pins by the closing mechanism in many cases obviously in some cases they're repeating some of the stuff but this is definitely an older piece and it is stunning let me show you another piece before the camera says enough is enough you can't show them everything look at that that is just an explosion of colors and happiness. It is a giant, it's, you can see by the, the card, like it's a really big brooch. It has decent weight to it for sure. Um, you could feel like all of the design in there, all these little individual areas that were painted in. This is what the back of it looks like. So really, really pretty. Um, let me see quickly if I can find a signature. But in the meantime, once again, please remember to... Uh, nope, I don't see any signature. Um, in all of these things, I'll look at a lot closer later. But please remember to subscribe to the channel. And also remember that we're doing that giveaway and what you have to do. And I will put some details down below in the comments and in the description for you so that you guys can hopefully get in on winning some free stuff. And I also pay the postage and this is 
just my way of saying thank you, sharing, and also paying it forward. And look at this. This is like a reverse pressed glass pendant. And it's surrounded by this beautiful, I think it's a brass frame. I would have to look at that frame closer or this setting. But you can see where she was pressed into the glass, the image. And this is just, it's, it's a heavy, I mean, look how thick that is. That is truly a chunk of glass. And she is going to be amazing once she's cleaned up and on a beautiful gold chain. So that's, you know, I think it's stunning. I love it. What else can I show you guys? Let's try to get one more in there. We'll do this brooch, I think. There's a lot here, you guys. Like, if there's anything... Oh, let's do these as well. So these are absolutely... When I saw these, I mean, I was like, wow. Now, this style and the colors... The colors are green, yellow, purple, which are the colors of the women's, uh, let me think of what it's called.